Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Recently, the Office of the Inspector General for NASA released a report on the exploration upper stage for SLS, the Space Launch System. The exploration upper stage is the upgraded upper stage for SLS. It is not the stage that actually launched on the SLS on Artemis 1, that was the ICPS that's a lot smaller. Uh, this upgraded upper stage, which I'll call EUS from now on, uh, is uh, bigger. It, the stage that went on Artemis 1 was only 5 meters in diameter. The EUS is the full 8.4 meters in diameter for SLS, and it weighs more than 100 tons. It has four RL-10s at the bottom, but basically the office of the inspector general said that it's been delayed, It is the development is not going well, it is being made by Boeing, and uh, apparently it's fraught, it's fraught, it's expensive and fraught. Uh, so this led to a lot of people on Twitter saying that maybe they should replace it with Centaur 5. Among these was Eric Berger from Ars Technica. And uh, Centaur 5 is the upper stage on Vulcan, the, the Vulcan rocket from ULA, and ULA is making a lot of those stages, so they've already developed it. However, of course, it would need to be adapted for SLS, it needs to be an inner stage that fits and everything like that. Well, here's the Vulcan Centaur 5. I I'm wondering exactly what they're thinking about this, because it's smaller. Whoops. It, it is a smaller stage. It's about half the size of EUS. It's about 5.4 meters in diameter to 8.4 for the hydrogen tank of EUS. Of course, the oxygen tank's smaller, but the oxygen, oxygen tank is still huge compared to the one on here. This is half the size. It's half the size. It has half the engines. It has two, and they're basically the same engines. They're RL-10s. Um, so, okay, fine. Uh, but I'm here to test things. I, 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 there are a lot of people who just give their opinions all the time, so I'm going to run an experiment. I'm going to launch the EUS on SLS first, and then launch the Centaur 5 on SLS, and see what they can get to the moon. The goal of SLS is to get stuff to the moon, so we don't care about the low Earth orbit capacity at all. Um, as far as getting stuff to the moon is concerned, it seems like EUS is ready to carry 42 tons, so I'll make sure that we have 42 tons on it. And I'm going to manually launch it because the trajectories might need some tweaking, uh, especially for the Centaur 5 stage. I don't have a script ready to launch Centaur 5 on the SLS, which will be a little bit peculiar, and I better just go ahead and do that dynamically myself. So anyway, we will see how it goes and test the capacity of each variant in turn. So, so first we'll check that this can do 42 tons or with what margin it can do 42 tons. All right, so here we go, SAS on. Oh, no SAS. Hmm. Right, okay, well, fine. That's interesting. We'll have smart ASS right from the start. Ignition. I usually use KOS to control SLS after all. But, all right. Off it goes. We are lined up with the moon, but I don't plan to do the actual transfer. We'll just see what kind of margin we have for the transfer. I am assuming that we're going to save 3,200 meters per second for the transfer. So, for Centaur 5, the core of SLS can basically put it into orbit. Uh, of, course, of course, we do want the core of SLS to stay suborbital, so the Centaur 5 would have to finish orbit, but it just barely needs to finish orbit, I think. We'll see. I mean, of course, this is just my supposition here, but uh, for EUS, SLS stops about a thousand meters per second short, generally speaking. Okay, well, two minutes and eight seconds is when they separate. All right. And I'll just go for 120 kilometers for the fairing separation for both. SLS's fairings with the Block 1B, the EUS on top, will be bigger than the fairings on the Centaur 5. I don't know if that's going to cause any problems, because right now the the only thing that's going to be manifested is the Orion spacecraft plus a Lunar Gateway module. And the Lunar Gateway module should be able to fit in a 5 meter fairing, but 
not a hundred percent sure about that that they're planning on that so that's one of the potential problems with using Centaur 5 whether the payloads that are going to be placed on SLS are necessarily going to fit in the fairing that the Centaur 5 would have on top of it of course the Centaur 5 could be placed inside the fairing that's a whole other thing it's actually got to take more from EUS than I originally thought but normally I put uh, 37 ton payload on top instead of 42 but now they're saying 42 so so the reason I'm doing it manually is because I actually don't think that the KOS script would actually be consistent with the two variants uh, so this will maybe be more marginally consistent that's what I'm thinking anyway all right so here we go I've got the extendable nozzle versions of the RL10s but functionally that doesn't make too much of a difference it may give the EUS a little bit more of a boost. Okay, cutting a little bit close on the periapsis side here, uh, but we will make orbit with the requisite amount. But maybe I should have launched a little bit steeper with the core, but uh, I'll basically be doing the same thing with the Centaur 5. And the fact that this had to pitch up a bit in order to save itself uh, will give up one of the downsides to carrying a heavier stage here but there's a lot of plus sides to it a heavier stage that doesn't have a super huge amount of thrust another option would be the upper stage of New Glenn but it's not as efficient as uh, having RL10s on the stage it might be better for lower orbit capacity probably not for the moon but we could test that separately okay so with my sloppy trajectory, uh, we get what NASA says SLS can get with EUS, um, and we can send three thousand. We can send it to the moon. Three thousand two hundred fifty-eight is not going to be a problem. Let's just verify. Well, okay, that that's wrong. <laughs> okay, I'm a little bit confused about what what's going on here with the maneuver nodes. They're starting at 10,000. Mechjeb, do you have another opinion on this? Okay, Mechjeb has the right number, even though that doesn't. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, sometimes, Kerbal. I haven't seen this one before, though. So yes, we have enough to send this over to the moon. So 42 tons with the US. Now, what about Centaur 5? All right, here we go with Centaur 5. I've got the same 42 tons on top. So, or it might be 41 point something. Anyway, uh, so we've got a heavy load and we'll adjust afterwards. I don't expect it to be able to carry it to orbit with enough fuel to get to the moon. So we will see about that. Let me just target the moon again. But, you know, I could be wrong. That's why we have to do the experiment. Ignition. And launch. So you can see the thinner fairing, obviously. That saves a bit of mass, of course, but it reduces some potential capability. We could also test all this with Orion actually on top and just see what the surplus cargo that can be carried is. Probably not much, either way, to be honest. The gateway modules can't be too heavy. Okay, booster set. Bearing set. So if we take the tally here, if we add the stage delta V to our current orbital velocity, that's more than enough for orbit, but we still have some height to go for and we have to compensate for the stage time and it can't actually complete orbit otherwise we'd have a really huge stage in orbit which we don't want to do okay but at this point it's not gonna make orbit on its own so we will be forced to use the Centaur 5 to complete orbit maybe it's the fact that I didn't have an SAS unit on here that caused the maneuver node issue I'm not sure 
Okay, separation, ignition. Oh, for some reason I don't have engine sounds on here. Clearly the waterfall plumes are there. It's probably something missing from waterfall. I'm not sure. So okay, we barely got above 140 kilometers on the periapsis with the other one. So, well, here's the thing. Um, we, 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 we basically got to orbit with the same delta V. And maybe it's just that I have a really crappy uh, trajectory of the US. That's possible. But I don't think that's going to give us more than two, three hundred meters per second more. Uh, I don't think it's going to give us more than that. Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure how, why this is. And I'm shocked myself. I was not expecting uh, the Centaur 5 to do well. In fact, uh, even in my Discord, I said, I don't think Burger is right about this. But turns out Burger is not too far off with the Centaur 5 thing. Centaur 5 is not that bad for SLS. And a lot of it is due to the fact that we really sort of want the core stage to do a little bit more and leave the really weak upper stage to just do the transfer or, you know, just finish orbit and do the transfer. So that's maybe a little bit more of an optimal situation. But yes, this can potentially get to the moon and heck, uh, to celebrate, why don't we do that burn? But here's the downside to this. It's got basically the full 18 minutes here. At least EUS, EUS is also an 18 minute stage, but it burns some of it in order to get to orbit. Uh, so, yeah. One thing about EUS is it has a lot of extra structure on it because the hydrogen tank is very separate from the oxygen tank. This is not as much of a problem with the, with the Centaur 5. It's more structurally efficient, it's thinner. I don't know if it would be up to NASA standards or something. I would presume so. But basically, it's just the lightness of the Centaur stage compared to the EUS that's a big deal here. I'm pretty sure I have the right numbers for the EUS because I got it from a Boeing document. So that's that shouldn't be an issue. But okay, but let's see. The fact that it's a, such a long burn time, maybe that's going to throw us off some. I mean, we're at 150 kilometers and we're pointing very much at the planet. <laughs> uh, maybe I should just go prograde initially. Okay, I'm also late in turning here. But considering the length of the burn, I don't think that's the biggest thing. Okay, we're gonna have other inaccuracies. Well, the startup sound is there. It's just whatever sound it was expecting to have for the burn sound is not there. Okay, we're looking to be about 120 short, actually. And this is probably more of a Kerbal Space Program thing because we're assuming an instantaneous burn there and NASA doesn't have to do that. Uh, so that might just be a quirk here. But just for argument's sake, let's knock the payload down so that we get this back. So with that fairing off, we see um, 12,579. Let's just say that we need 12,700. So reducing. And we were actually at 41.2 here. I have 42 in the other one. So just about like that. So call it 40 tons. Uh, and again, probably NASA's got the better trajectory and all that business. Uh, 40 tons, all right. So it depends on what they want to put on there. Of course, if you end up having a bigger fairing and the Centaur 5 like tucked in because you can't fit your payloads in a five meter fairing, that's a whole other deal. We're saving some mass by having the smaller fairing too. So yeah, there's some question marks here. I'll leave it here for now. That is the analysis of Centaur 5 on SLS in place of EUS. And maybe it's a good idea. It depends on exactly what they want to put on there. Uh, there's probably a little bit more margin for safety on EUS. And of course, there's more engines for redundancy. But this is not entirely inviable. I thought it'd be worse off than it really is.
So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.